The first tool you should think about investing in when it comes to viewing the night sky is a planisphere, or it's also called a star wheel. These are relatively inexpensive for you to purchase online, and what's useful is it'll show you not only the northern sky, but also the southern sky. You can see what the southern sky looks like simply by flipping over the star wheel, and it's located on the back. On the back of the star wheel, there are also directions on how to use this tool. Just be sure when you order this tool that you order the proper latitudes of where you are viewing from. I live in Hawaii, so my location latitude-wise is 20 degrees north, hence me buying this particular star wheel. Also notice the directions on your star wheel. Finding north is really key for you to be able to navigate the sky. Let's quickly review how to use a star wheel. Say we go out at 9 p.m. and we're gonna go out on December 10th. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep turning the wheel, keep turning the wheel until you find December 10th listed in the date bar. So then you're gonna line up December 10th exactly with the nine o'clock. And once you have it, what you want to do is look at what you will be seeing. So this shows you the whole sky at that exact date on December 10th and at 9 p.m. The next tool you want to invest in is a red flashlight. And you can easily make one of your own by taking red nail polish and painting a regular flashlight. And the reason for this is that our eyes are very sensitive in the dark. And if you flash a bright light in them, it can take up to 30 minutes for your eyes to readjust to the dark. I'm sure we've all experienced this at some point. For example, when you walk out of a movie theater into a bright light, it hurts your eyes. This is the same concept. You don't wanna shock your eyes with white light. So using a soft red light is really what is the best for your eyes. And I'm telling you, the kiddos, they love playing with the red flashlight. Another helpful tool for you is a field guide of the night sky. This is a field guide that I used and it's my go-to for everything. It talks about stars, constellations, different objects you'll be seeing in the sky, and it gives you a really good overview of what it is that you're looking at. And anytime I need help, I just go to my field guide. Another essential tool that you'll need is a comfortable chair to sit in. It is no fun standing on your legs with your neck straight up and trying to find the stars and constellations. So make sure you're sitting in a comfortable chair. It really does help. You could also use a sleeping bag. You can pile pillows in the back of a truck. Totally get creative when it comes to being comfortable. Another great tool you can use is an observation log. I have a observation log attached to this lesson, so feel free to download it and use it. But a nightly log is really helpful for you to use because then you can just keep track of what you're seeing over time and you can start to notice patterns. I'll be teaching you those patterns, but it's even better if you can start to notice them on your own. Now I wanna talk about some non-essential tools that can use, but would be really fun if you end up purchasing this, if this becomes a hobby for you. I most recently bought a pair of binoculars along with a tripod, and I have not been disappointed. I can point my binoculars at a dark portion of the sky, and when I look through them, I see a ton of stars, and it's been great for looking at nebulas, galaxies, star clusters, and if you feel this is going to become a regular hobby, I recommend you to start with a pair of binoculars. Another great tool you can use, of course, is a telescope. And when you do decide to buy a telescope, make sure you do your research. I recommend that you go to a local astronomy group where you can go to a collection of telescopes that are there and you can try out and see which ones you like to use the most. 
and you should expect to pay a couple thousand dollars for one of these um, if it's a really good telescope. If you're finding them for less than that, it may not be worth your investment. I know for me, this is not something I've chosen to, per to pursue yet, but I know it eventually will be in my future. Talking to other amateur astronomers can be really helpful too because you can learn from any mistakes they have made when it comes to purchasing telescopes and you can just get really great advice. So take advantage of that resource if it's available to you. Another great investment for you could be a subscription to a relevant magazine. I personally subscribe to Astronomy Magazine, but Sky and Telescope is another useful one as well. And I recommend it because it can show you what the layout of the sky will be for the month in different celestial events that may be occurring for that particular month. There are also really helpful articles in here just to further your knowledge about astronomy and discover what the most current research is. You might find that some other members of the family might enjoy these magazines as well. Let's review the tools you'll need for stargazing. A comfortable chair is a necessity. A star wheel, red flashlight, field guide, and a log book, all highly recommended. Binoculars, telescopes, and magazine subscription? When you're ready, I definitely recommend them. Friends and family, of course, always make the adventure more fun. And pets? You can always bring them along, but any kind of company is definitely worth having around because when you get to share what you can find with others, it just makes the experience more enjoyable. Thanks for watching.